and everything associated with the Higgs. So we put all the theorists up here, so they obviously have different specialties, uh, ranging from what we just heard to actually doing calculations and things like this. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Carol, you gotta sit in the middle now. Come on, come on, come on. It's obvious who he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, this is a lot more, for those of you who are at the one in Maryland, this is supposed to be a lot more informal. We're just trying to have a discussion here. Um, so please feel free to ask any questions and chime in with the answers yourselves, because we didn't pick these people that they have every single answer about Higgs physics, and in practice, we probably have lots of questions left over from Albert and Elliot's talk earlier today, as well as other interest in the audience. Um, but I guess the starting question is a number of people had some questions from Roberto's talk about uh, dihedral production. And yeah, and in fact, maybe to frame sort of the two things. One is, um, so you, you, you gave us a number of sort of the C variables, the deviations from the standard model, the coefficients in some higher dimensional Lagrangian, directly relate to things that we can go and measure. And one, for just for simplicity rather than for completeness, if I take composite Higgs, and I take it in the, in the incarnation, which keeps the number of the fewest moving parts as far as precision observables, and I ask, who are those parameters that you would say, these are the really important ones that we should be you know, keeping track of and fitting to, I'd say, who are they? And, and the second question, which is really quite distinct, is what is what would be, in some sense, the high energy program that the LHC can actually carry out or not that tests the Higgs as its function, which is to make a theory which is a high energy theory of particles. So these are the two sort of. You mean Higgs, Higgs precision? So there's Higgs precision, and then there's the role of the Higgs at high energies. And what would you say are, is the way of testing it? You discuss some of the aspects of it, but we want to get, as real experimentalists here, we want to get down to brass tacks. And what can we hope to achieve at the LHC? Or maybe it's challenging, but what challenge should we try and overcome at the LHC? Is the high energy program for a you know, 100 TeV collider? Or, and we just do precision Higgs at the LHC as best we can? What's the situation when it comes down to these actions that, that we can actually carry out? Yeah, this was <coughs> partly was in the conclusions that I, I skipped, so I shouldn't should not skip them. But uh, <coughs> so the, the I think that the two scenarios in which the electronic symmetry. I should also is, say this entire blackboard. If you wanted to jot anything down, but sure, it's totally up to you. Yeah, the, the the two cases in which the dynamics is weak and the dynamics is strong are somehow <coughs> complementary. <coughs> so in the case in which the Higgs is composite, then this is the brief summary of the. Of all the slides, then you you expect the largest effects showing up in the three-level couplings, okay, first, and the other place is the gamma. So th this is uh, concerning single Higgs quantities. So the, the three-level couplings uh, shifts in the three-level couplings are coming from the the fact that the Higgs is a Gaussian boson. So there is a there is a there is a nonlinear sigma model Lagrangian which is implied in uh, deviations from the standard model predictions. And these are uh, parametrically larger than, than other effects coming from other states. So the first obvious place to constrain these models is by precisely measuring these couplings. So the three Can you just write effects. down which ones for those of us who are keeping track? Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's the usual ones. So it's certainly. Coupling to uh, what I call CDs, coupling to Higgs to vector bottles. Okay. Here I'm assuming that there is a solid symmetry, so it's either yeah, a W or a Z. So this is the first thing to precisely measure. And this is, in fact, the quantity which is already very strongly constrained by, by left. Okay. So, in a sense, we already have a precision measurement of this at the level of 5%, but this is subject to the assumption that there are no extra loop effects. Okay. So, we have to get rid of this assumption by directly measuring this coupling at the LHC. So, this and, is certainly and the, so the assumption is a standard model. Yeah. Sorry? And 
and it's also under the assumption it's a standard model. Well, no, the, the, the assumption, so you, you have a scenario in which you, you can now, you start from the standard model and you can introduce deviations, and modifications from the standard model predictions. So one deviation is to have a different coupling, and the only coupling which is, uh, which is of importance in this game is the coupling to, to vector bosons, because the only important volume correction is this. Okay, it's not energies of vectors in which the Higgs field plays, and, and the only important parameter is, uh, is this coupling. For example, the coupling to fermions at small width is not important. I mean, there are effects which are uh, suppressed by the bottom mass, but uh, they are subnormal. So this is the only coupling which is important. Really. The other obvious uh, <coughs> modification is looped that loops uh, which correct okay. these self energies coming from new physics. Yeah, but this is completely model dependent. Okay, so here there are several directions. You can get uh, larger effects, but uh, uh, okay, you have to specify which kind of, of model you have in mind. So if you assume that these effects are small, then you can put a 5% bound on this coupling. Okay, so it's beyond the standard model because you are modifying this coupling. But it's under the assumption that there are no uh, effects with which you can tune. So now, in particular, the, standard model particle content but deviation from yes, the exactly. If you want, yeah, you have Now, direct measurements of the Higgs coupling is uh, not obviously relying on this assumption. It's, a, it's something that uh, has to be done with high priority. And also the coupling of the Higgs to fermions, which in fact you can divide as coupling to upwards, downwards, and if you want, uh, there are coupling to leftwards, which uh, you can also. Now, why three? Well, because <coughs> there are there is a there is one operator <coughs> which uh, you can write in this way. This is the kind of operator which is uh, giving you, together with the usual Yukawa coupling, is giving you deviations to these couplings, and so that the the coefficient let me call it C psi, and let me also put in front the factor of the normal Yukawa coupling, so you have the usual. Operator, which is y psi plus the new operator. Now here the problem is that you have to specify the flavor structure. Okay, so there will be a flavor structure here, okay. and uh, you have to specify what the flavor structure of this uh, of this coefficient. And here the, the, the game is very dangerous because you, you can get uh, uh, flavor change into arcades, which will completely kill you uh, immediately. So the, the one uh, safe assumption is to, to, to is the following. You, you can assume that there is the same flavor structure as okay, in, the, in the normal Yukawa coupling, and this is just a number. Okay. So then you have only three possible three directions in which you can, uh, three, three kind of operators which you can uh, introduce. One is, uh, is modifying the upwards, the other is modifying the downwards, and the other is modifying so this kind of alignment, you can get it not, I mean, easily in, a, in several ways. You can have a minimal, minimal flavor violating type of theory, or even in compositeness, uh, in compositing theories, there is a way to, to align this operator with, with, this, uh, with this operator. So there are several possibilities. And, and in, this, uh, in this perspective, you have three couplings that you, you want to, three numbers that you want to extract. Okay, and also here, uh, I would say that there is a high priority to get this number. So these are the three level coupling that I was mentioning. Plus, if you if you use a single X data, there is Z gamma. So Z gamma is a is a, is a contact interaction. This X contact interaction. And here you can you can you can have a large effects coming from loops of a, of a composite particle. So here there is no, except for this left-right parity, which is somehow <laughs> protecting these, uh, these coupling, there are no extra uh, selection rules coming from the fact that the Higgs is a ghost. Okay, so you, you do expect here large modifications of the same, of the same level as, as, uh, as here. Okay, so th these are the, the three places where from single Higgs measurements you can really powerfully test Higgs composite. So the top plays no special role here. What? The top fork plays no special role. Well, 
there are there are rare processes like for example uh, yeah the flavor violating processes like mercury like uh, for example top top pick charm uh, what else uh, so I mean th there are modifications of the top couplings but uh, but the, the top coupling to the hips is one of the of the couplings involved but uh, let me see is there anything else. But this, this, is, this is a choice specifically for composite things, right? I mean, yeah. is that, is that this is specific for composite things, right. exactly. Why? Yeah. In the case in which the dynamics is weakly interactive, right, the, the list of the uh, crucial places is different. No, I mean, I was asking in this case, yeah. in the composite right. context, as for Roberto, I was asking, is that the what would you put your money on as a good set? You know, there are many exclusions and fine prints and so on, but with your judgment, having to work through many of these things, this is the set of couplings that you would say are sort of strategically important. Which are already strongly because they're already in uh, the scenario right now. In fact, let me ask it like this though. These things have a reach in a parameter you call f, and if I multiply by three, it's the mass of resonances that we could directly see if they were light enough at the LHC. Right? So this measuring these has a kind of virtual reach, telling us about the scale of new particles that we'd love to see explicitly directly. Can you give us a sense of the reach of these things in terms of what is perhaps achievable at the LHC, even with the best efforts of, you know, well, here of our, like, experimental friends with the Yeah, so there's a, well, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a question of, even Thielman can, uh, no, no, there's a question of the, the, the reach in terms of, they can tell you we can measure that CV. It's precision in the heat scalp, yeah, yes. But, but, but then, does it have much reach virtually? In, in other words, you must have already talked to some experimenters that have ballpark of how well they're ever going to do on these at the LHC. Yeah, I mean, uh, the level of Q percent with the LHC at, at 300 inverse points of our luminosity, yeah. I think it's the ballpark of 5 some percent. And, what, and, in, and in your language, F, re, the reach in F is therefore... Well, this, is, this is for B over F. Okay, it's something so like the reach of B over F of, of, of a fifth. Yeah, okay, so five, this is 5 percent. So it means that, roughly speaking, the physics of new composites outside the standard model that this is this is competing with is sort of in the several TV ballpark. Yeah, the, the mass. The, well, at this point, it depends on the coupling. I'm, I'm throwing in my own presence. Yeah. The coupling, uh, you know, the, the story with the coupling it's a, it's a delicate one because you might think that you might think of a simplified scenario in which all the states are interacting with the same strength. Okay, and this is somehow the perspective that the people at the beginning had. But then you realize that uh, you, if you really believe in this scenario, and you look, for example, the, at the value of the mass of the Higgs, then you, you, you see that there is a tension with uh, having uh, large couplings, at least <coughs> for the top part. Okay. So the mass of the Higgs is, uh, is suggesting that if this scenario is, is true at all, then these guys, the top partners, might be more weakly interacting mm -hmm. than, uh, than other particles like, for example, field one resonances, which said you want to be very heavy, right, and, and then strongly interacting. So the, the, same, the, the picture might be a little bit more complicated than this. It might be a split spectrum, like uh, in natural SUSY, in which heavy, the, the heavy states are field one resonances, <coughs> and this will put you on the safe side for less weakness in the test, and the, the, the top partners are, are lighter and more weakly interacting. So here, the MDM estimate is uh, it's a two-fold one. I mean, it's uh, uh, about the third generation of that. So th there is another dimension to our question that you know very well that would give you R sub B. For example, right? I mean, if I had some simple physics to generate C four, the same physics could easily generate the operator of H dagger D U H Q bar sigma bar Q. Another dimension to our question. So which one? This one. Some, if we have some uh, vector like state that, that we're mixing with, you, you, you get the three level. We, we, we get a three level, and that operator comes from this, and uh, not putting that, uh, uh, removing this, but comes on the diagram. Right, so that one is your operator, and then 
this one is typically BB bar, zeta BB bar trouble. Now, um, so, uh, I mean, by a factor of 10, zeta BB bar, I mean, if this is, if this is visible at the LHC, you're naively dead by a factor of 10. But you have a, you have some custodian uh, underlying idea, right? Or what's, what's worth Well, in fact, I, I briefly mentioned these. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. These problems in the, the uh, yeah. No, but you're completely right. I mean, uh, especially there is one of them which is uh, which is giving uh, a coupling. I mean, once you set it in the vacuum, it gives a copy of the the W to top right yeah. and bottom right, and which eventually you can close and, and you can make this was gamma. Okay. There's also that. With yeah. a, yeah. a yeah. parallel yeah. line. Yeah. So here, if you translate it into a cut into a bound on the on the mass of the fermions which circulate there, it's, it's of the order of uh, 900 GB, close to 1 TB. And there, okay, th this is very dangerous because it's, uh, it, it's constrained doublets because here you have bottom right and, and top right. And, uh, and uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's a flavor blind vertex, so you, you cannot play around with, uh, with flavor here. Right. And um, yeah, so that, I mean, uh, th there is little, I mean, one way to uh, to suppress it is to play with custodial symmetry. If top right and bottom right are seamless, then then this uh, this vertex is, is not allowed. So you have to break the custodial symmetry, and then uh, there, there is a further suppression. But still, the, the bound is strong. However, these couplings, so this operator can be generated by by also by by other effects. For example, you can have sure. the mixing, the Higgs mixing, for example. Yeah, sure. exactly. I mean, there, there are other ways to sure. get it, and so it, it's plausible, it's, uh, it's possible that you But I thought, I, I thought where these things tend to come from, my, my impression was where these things tend to come from in the bottom models of these things, like that, mixing with... with, uh, with it with also comes or... from wave function normalization, right? So you, you can have, for example, top left, top left, or top right, top right, I and, then, and, then, uh, oh, sorry. and then once you rotate it back, then you get these. I also have a, a high... Yeah. So wave function normalization, is that like the case? It's a, it's really a wave function of a, of the, the the external force, right? Top left. Sorry, right. external force. Sorry. The, the, yeah. the, the CH factor is is not in your list because that's no CH CH is the, CH is, the is this other operator. Mm -hmm. okay. If the wave function, if you want, you can see that the normalization of the wave function yes. is the Higgs. Right. Yes. Right. No, that is a there is something different. Okay. So here. Uh, if you want to get a, a contribution from heavy states to this coefficient, then you really have to break the Gaussian symmetry because this is the kinetic term of the of the number Gaussian bond, right? So if you want to be normalized, you have to break the symmetry. So that is fixed by the the codex. If you tell me that the codex is uh, <coughs> SF5 broken to SF4, I can tell you this number. So that that CH is or is not independent of the, the, the ones that are high priority. So this is in the, no, these two are independent. And the reason that it doesn't show up in every single, I'm just confused. Why no, I, I why was mentioning wave function normalization of the fermion, right? Coming coming from this kind of diagram. So, for example, here you can have top right, top right. Okay. But, that, but isn't that, that just what we're talking about? Well, it's a, it's a different operator in the sense that this is a psi, uh, so it's h dagger h. Right? Oh, it's, 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 it's close friend, but it's a... Uh, well, how come you don't have the other one? I mean, how come whatever thing just gives you that one doesn't also give you the H dagger in the H? Is, is that some heavy fermion that, that's mixing with that? Right? It's, a, it's a heavy fermion, right. yes, it's a heavy fermion. So, so why do you have that? Don't you, I mean, if you have that, you tell well, us... Well, in fact, normally you, you have, you do, you do. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. So, so let, let, me, let me interrupt for a second and say, the, the, the thing that seems to be... The the there, there, there's one more dimensional six operator which is constrained by RCP, and, and we don't care about it as far as Higgs coupling is concerned. But, but if, if we add it to the list, it would have to have. If we see these couplings, those guys, which are also dimensional six, six operators, would have to have coefficients that are like smaller. Yeah. So let me try and say that the, right. the wish list for yeah. action would seem to be um, if you have a really dumb old power counter saying. I have some new physics scale. I'm going to call it, for experimentalists, M, the scale of new physics. And there's when we say it's strongly coupled, there's some new strong coupling scale out there. 
There are a set of higher, and there's very basic decisions. The Higgs is a Golson boson or something. But then there's some thing that Roberto has shown, which is the effective Lagrangian with some new couplings. <laughs> then, using the same thing, you can also work out, as you have, a whole bunch of precision tests we've already done. You don't have to do them in the second, second run. It's done in that lap or something. And um, those constrain this very simplified parameter space. And in terms of a picture you may not have seen me draw there, my Thank God we don't have the third circle, otherwise. <laughs> well, I was just going to say. We'd be frontiering, and I would be crying. <laughs> In this question, if you, if you say, there, there's a simple thing that could happen, that when you take a very simple picture of compositeness, very one scale, one coupling, everything goes like that, you work out what precision tests have already told us. You may discover that all the measurements you're about to do, I don't know this to be true, you may find out that all the, all the precision tests you're going to do at, of the Higgs in the future at the LHC are going to yield you nothing new in this compositeness paradigm. That's one. Well, I think that then you might enlarge it to sort of say there's, there's some other parameter. That's the limit which is clearly going to work. No, no, no. Well, because, because if you can crank that coupling, I mean, in this picture, for, 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 his, for, for, for the coupling of fermions, you could crank that guy up to 4 pi. Yeah. Um, and still be okay with the RCP. But yeah, I think you, you'd have to. No, I'm saying that if you get, start, you get if, if your philosophy starts having sort of relative factors that are, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll then you can move, 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 move outward from there. But it'd be nice to know what sort of the simplest thing, and then the simplest thing that survives past experiments. Fact, and Robert, and so let me ask you another question. Along, uh, actually, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I two more, two more, two no, more I want to actually add a little bit of this to answer you, but but I will tell you later. Oh, is there a reason why you write some of the operators in unitary gauge and some of them not in unitary gauge? Well, yeah, no, that is, uh, so th there are, exactly, I mean, if, if you want to, uh, for example, have some implementation of a Monte Carlo or, uh, I mean, do a homological analysis, then it's useful to have uh, a parameterization in the unitary gauge. Right, okay. But, 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 I agree but with that. But for theories, uh, exactly, for theories, I, in fact, I, I put a bar. <laughs> no, <laughs> Sorry I, about that. No, no, I, 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 I prefer in unitary gauge, actually. One, 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 one reason is that, um, at least, uh, the, there's a kind of an artificial factor of three when you write things that way. For, uh, for, for, for the Higgs couplings from taking, you know, because there's three other the objects there, which, which seems to give you a somewhat bigger reach on the mass scale, which in any underlying theory that I know of, it goes away. So, uh, so it's, I, I find it a little better writing than that. Yeah, I think it's both are useful. I'm sure these and also for Monte Carlo. I'll show you. Sorry. Let me go back because I, perhaps I, I, I got the impression that the, there is a strong bound here, but in fact, uh, uh, the way out to, to suppress these couplings and these effects is just to assume that the, the coupling of the elementary fermions to the composite fermions yeah. is somehow small. Small, yes, okay. Yeah. Now, th so this, will, for example, will suppress all these, uh, these effects here, okay, because they stay like down the square. But still, you have to get the Yukawa coupling. So the Yukawa coupling is, uh, is, is measured. And, and this is coming from from these kind of diagrams. Yes. Okay. So if you have you have this, so this is lambda right, this is lambda left. But I think you, you, you and, and then and then you have also additional powers of the Higgs, but still the same same powers of lambda left and lambda right. So once you resolve all these terms, what do you get? You get the, the Yukawa coupling times the modification of order b squared divided by f squared. Okay, so these these are these modifications are possible and are not suppressed. All the other effects can be suppressed if you if you assume that these lambdas are somehow smaller. And, and this is the way which you kill modification. I mean the, the, the corrections to these operators, which modify the coupling of the of the z to the fermions. This is the way out. Okay. Of course, the, there is the case of the special case of top right, which uh, you, you can no time in the special the, case. <laughs> but, 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 can I just, uh, but I'm in fact, maybe we could pose a similar question to Tomo and then he could tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I didn't know the, uh, I thought you were asking the question that, that I'm still, I still don't know the answer to. Suppose we don't see any um, uh, resonances on the way to, I don't know, 1 or 2 TeV, and we had that be pretty early at round 1, uh, round 2, I'm sorry. 
Do we have any chance of seeing deviations in these couplings? Yeah, so you want to know whether these kind of precision measurements are competitive. Are uh, actually necessary for composite Higgs measurement. Well, I, I would say that the answer is not uh, unique. For example, Z gamma, um, the, the, the coupling of the Higgs to Z gamma, it, it's a place where you, you, can, uh, you can have large shifts, large effects, even in the case in which the, the fragments are very heavy. Okay, so uh, th this is a place well, where, where you can compete. You probably won't do Exactly. And, um, and th the other place is somehow, I mean, uh, the, the, the connection between the size of the effects and the, ma the actual masses of the fragment is, uh, is, is, uh, is related to the coupling, right? So if the coupling is, uh, is large, then, then this is uh, giving you somehow a stronger constraint on the masses, otherwise uh, the, the constraint is, is weaker. So the, the comparison de depends on the, on the coupling strength. Yeah. So compared to first experimentalists, you said 10% for the, uh, for the coupling measurement. Uh, what would be the equivalent precision? Well, the the because this we haven't studied very much. I think. Yeah. So par parametrically, you expect uh, effects in z gamma. So this is the the, the shifts in the in the z gamma uh, coupling. This goes like uh, z square or f square times the multiplicity of states. So let me call it then uh, okay. number of fermions which circulate the loop. Mm -hmm. So, right, so th this can be larger, okay? So you can, you can get a number here. Now, where to stop? I don't know whether this, this was your question, but... Uh, and the mass of those fermions are, again, some coupling time out. The mass of those, those fermions are, exactly, yeah. again, what I just so said, the the some coupling time 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 Okay, now, I, I don't know where, you could also look for where to stop. I, I would say that... The, the, where to stop is probably, well, first it's a matter of taste, but it's really uh, related to the, to the degree of tuning that you have in this theory. So the degree of tuning here in this theory goes at least, so this is at least bigger than d uh, square of x square. Okay. So typically it's bigger than this because there is some model building quantity of tuning that you have to, to make. So if you measure the coupling at the level of 1%, then you, you have the equivalent of, uh, you have tested the theory of the, the 1% Venturi level. Okay. Yeah, but okay, in run two, you saw where we are with next to Z gamma. If you get 20%. But in, in Z gamma, the situation is better because it, in addition to this, you, you, you expect to have some, to see the multiplicity of states in the, the loop. So you expect to have a collective uh, effect. Okay. Now, to be honest, I have to say that the same kind of collective uh, effect. We also uh, expect it in the S parameter, okay? That uh, there is always some, some problem. So the S parameter is another such observable in which you don't need any breaking of the Goldson symmetry. You can make a loop okay, of composite fermions. And in fact, uh, there is a, a very nice paper by Lisa Randall uh, and Golden uh, in, in the 90s in which they were exactly uh, doing this calculation in the, in the context of uh, Technicolor. So again, so you can you can make a, you can obtain a correction to the wave function of the, the to to green, to point a green function of the vector bosons without the need of breaking any any laws of symmetry. And here again, you respect the multiplicity and f. Okay. So the moral is that somehow you also expect if this is large, at the same level, you would also say that this is large. Uh, if you want, the, the good news, so this is the, the, the bad part of the, the story is that you expect it to be large. So in this, uh, in this electric, electric frame field uh, plane, then it's, uh, it's a sort of blob. Okay. Uh, the good part is that this can be negative, so somehow you can tune, but here you, you have to tune. Okay. So, hold on before we keep going, because we'll have plenty of time to keep discussing all these things over Y and Gs. Um, I want to flip to uh, the other side of the spectrum, instead of talking about new physics on this, talk about um, standard model precision, so this will be a question for Carol. And, and Albert is stuck, um, I guess, in um, projections for the precision you'll get on these couplings eventually. One of the scenarios was a factor of two in all theory errors by uh, whenever these couplings are supposed to be measured, which is a time scale of 10 years. So, 
given the kind of state of the art program for where things are at with uh, calculating cross sections and Higgs as well as standard model, is this kind of a realistic projection in your perspective? Or what are the kind of biggest bottlenecks for improving Higgs precision based on standard model calculations? Maybe I would add that that also includes not just work on the theory side, but for example, PDFs, sure. which is a part of what goes in, what you say is theoretical error, but it's actually experiments such as the IHC can help and will help in that respect as well. So it's not all on your shoulders per se, <laughs> yeah, but, but that there is a... Yeah, but that's not going to make the difference, right? I mean, it really, I mean, I mean the, the, there is the link that you can never bridge in the, se in the sense of translating a rate mm -hmm. measurement to a coupling measurement. Um, but rate is like, you know, some cross-section after like, you know, cuts, uh, kinematic cuts after background projection cuts. I mean, this is so, I mean, that one you will never, we will never get around, right? Uh, experiment. No, and therefore the question that I just yeah. added, yeah. it's not just, you know, no, no. by yeah. orders of things like that, no, no. scale factors, <laughs> PDFs and things like that, and that understanding of that. So, yeah. just in context. But eventually so you're you're the brain mitigates through traducial differential measurements. Right. It's really learned already. No, it's just, I mean, at the end, at the end of the day, it'll end, land on field of space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I give him a bite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shy person, so. Um, I, 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 I don't know. It's, 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 it's a complicated question in the following sense that um, there are some parts or pieces that go into the prediction of all different things that uh, are used to measure Higgs couplings at the LHC, and they have very different theoretical status. For example, glue, glue to Higgs inclusive production cross section will for sure be calculated to three loops, and uh, this might reduce the error to, Stefan, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would say something like five to six percent, maybe. Now, an important question which is not discussed at all is the part on distribution functions that can be used with this calculation for the consistency. Given the estimate that these people did of uh, sort of approximate next to next to lead node, <coughs> next to next to next to lead node effects um, are strictly speaking inconsistent because they're not using PDFs uh, calculated and extracted to the same order. Now, whether or not one should a big effect is not so clear because uh, usually these PDF shifts are not very large. But nevertheless, if you want to be absolutely sure that you're talking about you know few percent deviations and they're really there, you should address this question. Now, from this point of view, it actually becomes less clear whether or not one should pursue the exact calculation of this N3 award because, uh, it, as far as I'm concerned, it's completely unrealistic to have PDFs extracted to the same level of precision. Whereas I can imagine that doing approximate calculations combined with approximate PDFs at N3 law is actually a more sensible way to go. So it's, it's a complicated thing. I don't have a good opinion about this. Now, what will change, for so this will happen, whether or not this will have us you know, entirely in reducing the error by a factor of two, I don't know. But, but there will be progress on this side. There will be progress on things like X plus J. This will be known to next to next to lead in order for sure. And this will help with a better understanding of the fiducial volume cross sections, in particular relevant for WW and tau tau final states. Um, I don't expect a whole lot of progress in TT bar H, for example. This is too complicated. I can't imagine this will be done at next to next to the, next to next to the in order. Um, I think important class of the measurements. This is not directly related to to, to Higgs uh, couplings, but nevertheless, it's related to the Higgs. Uh, measurements of the, um, of the, well, the two things. First of all, measurements of the, of the jet V2 final states. So <coughs> there is a lot of discussion of whether the PT of the Higgs, the, the zero jet V2 bean, introduces incredible uncertainty on the Higgs uh, production cross section. Now, what you want to do is to measure this. You have an update on Z plus jets, you have an update on Z gamma, you have an update on gamma gamma. You want to take this final state put a jet veto on them, and actually find a place where predictions for this well-defined final state start breaking down and start disagreeing very significantly with next to lead node or next to next to lead node predictions. You just want to find the PTE of the you know, colorless final state, 
where you actually see that uh, fixed order calculations break down. Then there is a well-defined rule of translating this result into, you know, partons with different color charges, I mean, initial state with different color charges and final states with different invariant masses. But then we will not have this discussion, endless discussion, you know, Stuart, Stuart Tuckman, you know, on certain estimates or something else, there will be a well-defined well measurement of something which will tell us for which value of the transverse momentum of the color neutral system, the perturbation theory, fixed order perturbation theory breaks down. The second thing that is interesting to measure is glue glue to ZZ and glue glue to WW. These are things that interfere with the Higgs. There are interesting effects that one can, interesting things that one can learn using this interference and high tail invariant mass distributions. And uh, yeah, it's not directly related to the question, so I'll not talk about this, but I think it's important well, to what can you, what can you learn? What can you learn? Yeah. Well, I can tell you what I know, and then right. yeah, I'm sure you can learn much, much more than, than, I, than that I know. But so I think a very interesting line of development that happened in the past several months was the idea that you can actually cons measure or constrain, depending on how optimistic you are, the width of the Higgs at the LHC. And uh, uh, so the, 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 the rule of the game is like this, that if you measure the narrow width production cross-section, we usually have the width of the, the, the coupling constant to the force in the numerator, the width downstairs. And so all the things that we see about coupling constant assume that the width is kind of standard model like. If you imagine changing the widths and the couplings in a coherent manner, then you will have infinitely many solutions as far as the Higgs couplings to you know, various standard model particles are concerned and the widths of the Higgs. Maybe not the most, you know, theoretically well-motivated scenario, but nevertheless. So, in order to break this degeneracy, you have to measure either the couplings or the widths separately. You can't do the, the widths measurement at the LHC. The widths is 4 MeV for 125 GeV Higgs, so you have to measure the couplings. You can measure the couplings from the interference effects or the off-shell production of something that couples to the Higgs, but, you know, the Higgs is taken off the mass shell and decays to, not, not decays, but, you know, H star decays to a particular final state. So there are two suggestions. One, to measure these couplings from the interference in gamma-gamma final states. You basically have glue-glue to Higgs to gamma-gamma, interfering with glue-glue to gamma-gamma. This gives you a mass shift in gamma-gamma channel, and there is no corresponding mass shift in the ZZ channel. So by looking at the difference in the masses that you have measured in these two particular channels, you have direct access to the couplings and not to the couplings divided by that. <coughs> so once you know this, you can actually go back to your narrow uh, width uh, cross-section, use the couplings that you measure, and sort of get the width that, you know, from, from this narrow width cross-section measurement. The size of the shift? The size of the shift depends on the size of the coupling. But realistically speaking, we are talking about uh, things like, uh, like, like uh, I mean, we, we can imagine, well, we, you can imagine measuring the, the, the Higgs width, which is roughly 10 to 20 times the standard model width. So we're talking about 40 to 80 MeV, which is a fantastic improvement compared to what you have now, which is 6 GeV measurement. <laughs> <laughs> now, the alternative way to do this is to actually look at the <coughs> ZZ final state where it so happens that there is a large contribution of H star going to ZZ, primarily because once you, once you're above the ZZ threshold, the Higgs likes to decay, or, or whatever, whatever used to be the Higgs, you know, this off-shell thing likes to start decaying into longitudinally polarized Zs, and so you have an enhanced off-shell effect there. There is also a big interference effect, which is unfortunately uh, destructive, so, but, but nevertheless, it, in, this channel, in this channel in particular, if you look at what you have now, you can already put some sensible constraints on the weeds of the order of you know, 20, 20, 20 times the standard model width, uh, standard model, uh, standard model uh, Higgs width. Already now, from the, from the CMS data alone. Just looking at the high, at the high. That's at the high, the high mass. And high invariance mass. The first thing we need like hundreds of uh, respect of For what? The interference, the first thing we discussed. For the first thing you need, you need a large, you, uh, you, you, you need a large event sample, yes. But I think you can also look at what you have now and also put some sensible constraints, which will be better than 6G that you have now. Okay? 
For the ZZ, if you look at the high invariant mass scale, you already know it will be sensitive to. So, so you have to be, so, so the, the, the kinematic distributions of, of these events is, is very peculiar. You basically have a flight distribution going all the way from the ZZ threshold to the highest invariant mass that you can measure. So it's a completely sort of shapeless distribution, sort of flat. Eventually it gets killed by PDFs, but for a large extent it's, it's sort of flat. But you're talking about the integral of the events in this region. So if the couplings are very different from the standard model, you should start seeing a large number of, of events in that region that you don't see. And this is where the constraint is coming from. I think there's a question. Yeah, I, I actually had a couple of comments about the PDF issue that so the first thing is that, uh, well, I guess the main thrust of what I'd like to say is that the uh, PDF uncertainties that we are talking about is really, the, is and is going to be experimentally driven, not theoretically driven. Because uh, I'm not that worried about next cube leading order PDFs. Because, for example, we know what's the difference between, say, next and next to the, next <coughs> and next to next to leading order blue and luminosities. And that's already less than 2 or 3 percent for Higgs protection. So, you know, I mean, I we, we don't know the next cube leading order and almost dimensions, but we do know them at small x, for That's example. Can I just may I disagree with the statement? Okay. I mean, you're probably absolutely right that this effect is small. But you see, you're going to play the following game. These guys will measure something which will have a 1 to 2 percent deviation from what you predict. And then, I'll say, look, we don't have constraint on this PDF, so this result is garbage. And you will tell me that it's very unlikely that this is garbage. And this will be the end effect of this discussion. Okay? <laughs> no, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you a different thing. I'm telling you that uh, the effect you worry about uh, you know, might be relevant, but it's rather smaller than other effects which we could control. So the thing is, if you, say, move from next square leading order, next cube leading order, blue and luminosity, I said, it's very likely that the difference would be below the 2 3% level because the change from next to next to next is already a few orders. On the other hand, if you go and look at the uncertainty on the blue and luminosity for Higgs protection, that's already larger than 5 or 6% for each given set. And moreover, the discrepancy between different sets is also of order 5 to 6%. Now, why is that? That's because the blue and luminosity at present is in almost entirely determined from scaling travel. And because you're you know, getting information from logarithmic scaling violations, uh, it's just that the experimental accuracy propagates onto a large deviation, regardless of how accurate the theory is. And in fact, the theory we know to be very accurate because the scaling violations you're measuring in para, which is in a small x region where you have accidental zeros in the BFKL series. So even though we don't know the next cube leading order on almost dimension, we know why it's going to be a small correction. So the problem is really that either you have a bigger lever arm in measuring scaling violations, mm -hmm. which you would only have if you had, say, the LHEC, which does not look likely, or you must use some other process. And using some other process is also better because it would help in solving the discrepancy between different groups. Uh, now, there are a couple such processes, one of which is pretty, I mean, you know, clean, nice standard model processes. Uh, the simplest of which is, is uh, Z plus J, or rather Z, the PT shape of the Z away from the forward direction. So it's not even Z plus J, it's uh, the PT shape of the Z at fairly large PT, so you don't have to worry about resummation inclusive, so you don't have to worry about the uh, jet algorithm. Uh, the, next, uh, the next leading order calculation is presumably going to be available soon because you've done Z plus J, or maybe not, but you tell us. Not soon. Not soon, okay, but uh, that's what we need from the theory side. And then from the experimental side, we just need you to measure it accurately with covariance matrix and stuff, which, uh, you know, there exists a Z plus J measurement, but it's without covariance matrix, so it's useless for PDFs. Uh, and the other thing is top, obviously, because then you have two points which pin uh, the X region what about uh, with top at, at larger, uh, at smaller X. What about digits? Digests, well, the problem with digests is that, um, uh, well, there, let me turn the question to you or maybe to someone else. The problem with digests is theory. I mean, at present, digests are not used for PDF determination because, um, uh, well, there are these two different re reasons. One is, is the uh, 
experimental uncertainty, but the other is the theory uncertainty related to different choices of, of scale. Mm -hmm. uh, so even if you had die jets to next to next to the order, which we don't have, and I'm not sure, I mean, we probably will have one jet inclusive next to next uh, relatively soon, die jets, I don't know. But even if, if you had it, there is always this issue of whether you should choose a rapidity dependent scale or not, and at present, that completely kills the use of digests. And so digests are not being used at present for PDFs because as soon as you start varying the scale, you get such huge, huge uncertainties that they just don't help. And I don't see that this is going to improve a lot unless maybe there was a way of combining, of, get, of getting PDFs using the Monte Carlo in the PDF extraction, but then that also gets And don't you mean differential? But there's always the risk that um, when measuring the PDF, uh, then basically, it can happen, new physics can be hidden there, and then there's always the Right, right, so that's, that's why I, I, I mentioned instead uh, electroweak processes like W plus, mm -hmm. I mean, the PT distri distribution of Zs or top productions where, you know, presumably the theory is clean. Top I mean, production right. differential. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just, I mean, to understand, I mean, to get an idea of, like, you know, what we will be looking at at the time, though, but I mean, imagine we have like, you know, whatever, how many years from now we have a, a measurement of, like, a certain number of things, sigma times branching ratio of channels, right? I mean, then you look at all uncertainties, and then it's the PDF left, right? right? And then what's going to happen is, like, you know, in Buki Tung's spirit, right? I mean, the PDF guys are going to go, and they're going to put all of these, like, measurements into their PDF fit, <laughs> and unless this fit gets really bad, it gets absorbed, right? I mean, this is the way that we have been doing PDF kind of things in the past. So do we still believe that we're going to find um, yeah. anomalous Higgs couplings, uh, deviation to Higgs couplings after that? That's my, sorry to well, I mean, yes, <laughs> yes, but they, they're just a clever way of expressing one experimental uh, result in terms of another one uh, with the calculation relating the two. Like, you know, when you say that what, what the standard model predicts is the ratio of gradient to deep elastic square or something. Yeah. Right. So uh, the technology for extracting PDFs is now rather better than it was 15 years ago. So you have much better control on the uncertainties which you are introducing in the procedure. But at the end of the day, if things are done properly, what what you're constrained by is the accuracy of the two calculations of which you're taking yeah. the ratio and the primary uh, the accuracy of the primary data which go into it. And yeah, but then <coughs> wouldn't you wouldn't you guys be able to like you know I mean right now we're looking at what, like you know one. But taking, oh, taking oh, ratios in yeah. different final yeah, states yeah. will kill this effect, right? So if you can still sensibly talk about ratios and get useful information, then PDFs disappear. So you are not sensitive to blue ratios. Can you say that again louder? I'm saying if you take ratios of things, right? You, you look at the same production mechanism, blue, blue to Higgs, but you start looking at Higgs to, I don't know, tau, tau, and Higgs to ZZ, and Higgs to WW, mm -hmm. right? Then to a large extent, the PDF issue, I mean, you can't do absorb the same issue in different ways in different right. processes, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, assuming yeah. we have many processes, yeah. that many of these things are just all that. No, 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 I understand this, I understand. But it's also cooking, it's also a lot of cooking, and also your scale and so it's a cooking, you know, it can revert back. Down. Yes, yes, this is all true, but to a large extent, you take the right here, it goes away. It will improve things. It improves things, yes, I agree, I agree. Yeah, but that, I mean, these kind of strategies, I mean, get going back to the experimental community, I think, um, maybe the strategy that we're, we're, we're working, using right now to measure these things is not the one that we should be using in the sense that <coughs> your, your analysis are becoming smarter and better every time we see them, right? They're becoming better. There's new parameter, uh, new view, the new, new measurements, new observables, new statistical tools, and so on and so forth. Um, they, these kind of tools make it much harder to apply, like, you know, simple, like, you know, whatever ratios or whatever correlations. Um, maybe we have to be dumber. Well, you don't actually do ratios. Result. I mean, ratios is a, is a metaphorical way of speaking. What you need yes. is experimental data with full information on their correlation. No, but so when you have the, the, the information on the correlation is there, and you're not actually taking the ratio, you're just calculating. No, but one. I mean, for example, I mean, I think that yes, one of the uh, one thing that he was re also referring to is like, you know, it looks like a ratio if you do like, you know, a total cross section and then all the experimental cuts come in and then a jet video comes in and that ratio is not a ratio anymore, yeah. right? <laughs> That's right. Um, right. If, if you have the, 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 the propagation of the correlations, exactly. it, is, it is there. Yeah. <laughs> so the point is really, 
the, the big matrix of correlation of the model of the correlation of the systematic across the analysis. Which is uh, not always a, 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 a usually not available. <laughs> And then should, you should uh, get it's really a modeling of the system. I mean, it's it's the modeling in, in experimental measurement. There is always the fact that you're modeling a systematic effect. You're not measuring systematic effect. You model it and you pull it in. You see what it does. Now this is the modeling of the systematic effect at the next level, which is not only the effect, but the way the effect propagates in end measurements in the sample. So. So one quick uh, organizational thing for anyone that wanted to skip the wine and cheese and go back to the hotel. The early shuttle leaves in two minutes, so. Okay, no one is moving. There's two shuttles at the, uh, okay, that's fine. Um, so we're gonna do one quick last question then we'll move everything to the wine and cheese because there's plenty of stuff to discuss and we don't have time, of course. Uh, hopefully this is just whetting our appetite for that. Yeah, so we'll ask this of all the panelists, go down the row, and um, so to the experimentalists in the audience, what is the one quantity that you want measured about the Higgs, most importantly? So we'll put uh, Nima on the spot. <laughs> the one quantity about the Higgs. If you could have... Experimentalists this room go back and start doing the existing accelerator. Existing accelerator. <laughs> 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 um, I thought that we would come. I think I, I'd, I'd like to know. I'd like to know the coupling to a BB bar as, as accurately as possible. Summer? Okay, given that you're already giving him the coupling to BB bar, uh, I, I want to know the gamma gamma in blue blue. So you don't each get your wishes. <laughs> just, just because it's going to be, you know, the, the usual argument that it's sensitive to loops, right? To, to new, new particles that come out of loops. So, you know, so BB bar, I guess, I don't know what Nima's, Nima's reason, but, but of course, if you have, if they, he somehow mixes with anything, then you can see deviations in the BB bar. It is the most, I think it's the most plausible thing right. where you would expect to see right. a deviation. For many reasons, if there's, if the reason the bottom is light is because it's, I mean, for all the reasons we're about to talk about, right. so. so. But, but can you imagine that you would see deviation there, none in any other measurements? I mean, so yeah. that the exotics can retire and the... No. And if well, the Higgs mixes with, with the light yeah. state that you just yeah. miss, yeah. Sure. 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 you're measuring the branching ratio, then once you change BB bar, everything else changes. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I thought I thought you were asking something. I mean, what, whether I can imagine that the only underlying modification is is to a BB bar. Obviously, if you let's say reduce the coupling to BB bar, everything goes up. So, uh, yeah. Well, normally, I would agree with Nima with BB bar, but since he asked for BB bar, the top is power. From a theoretic, from a purely minimization group theory perspective, to run up to high scales, the one we need. So I'll I'll give you the most original answer. I, I, I want to measure the, the the triple Higgs coupling. Okay. I l let me just say in in, it, in in two sentences that I think this is really a very important thing that high luminosity LHC can do. Uh, this is difficult measurement. The standard model answer exists, and it would be so. It's it's not a search. It's it's a real it's a real measurement in this sense. Whether or not you can do it is a big question mark. But this makes it more much more exciting from this point of view. So, by the way, okay. So, first of the question that, that I would ask whether you can you can imagine that you won't see anything. I know the answer already, but but whether there are many models where you you expect not to see anything in any of. The, in the division in any other coupling of the Higgs and just in the in the cubic coupling. Now I, I think the answer is yes, but it's uh, but these models are you know very very specific. It's 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 hard to imagine you know the dilaton if it completely mimics the, the Higgs, you might just see it in in, in die Higgs production. But otherwise, you know I would say that the the self coupling is unlikely to give you the uh, the first measurement of new physics. Um, <laughs> Assuming you don't see deviations in, in other. 
And, and in, in that respect, I would also say that you know, if, if you don't force me to choose one of these cartoons that we've already written down, then if I had to kind of guess where where uh, you know where I should look for new physics, it should be in exotic Higgs actually, and not not necessarily in in precision measurement of the Higgs, just because you know the Higgs, the coupling of the Higgs to the weed is so small, the coupling of the Higgs even to BB bar is one over forty, it's very small. So any small deviations can really change the branching fractions into some exotic decays, and, and that's where you know we don't compete with the standard model, so so we can be much more sensitive, uh, and and that's where I would look for new physics if, if I really. Uh, so please give me an exotic, uh, you know, <laughs> the search for all the exotic decays <laughs> that you, you can imagine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then Roberto, you gave us a laundry list, but what's your highest priority if you have to actually work on something? Well, I don't claim it's a high high priority, but I I think it's it's very important to uh, draw processes uh, in which we can use two Higgses. And I, I, I really so I, I agree on the on the Tania coupling, but uh, I would also, I mean, I would have a larger perspective on, uh, on looking yeah, to Higgs yeah, 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 and I think that yeah. this is one of the two things. And the other is uh, is uh, WW to, to Higgs or in absence of uh, possibilities to, to see this, this process, which is probably possible at the LSC, WW to WW as, as, a, as a way to probe uh, the, really the electric integration. Sorry, is WW to WW? Possible at the LHC? I that think so. I mean, yeah, that is possible. Yes, this is more well, like more than the experiment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. W2D6 is probably yeah. possible, but I think it has to be studied before claiming that it's impossible. So I think there is a challenge there. Uh, WW2WW and group root to hit 6 are really the places where you put your finger, and, and especially WW2WW, and, and, and really test how standard is the uh, Dynamics uh, behind electric integration. So I, I don't say that this is high priority with respect to all the other things, but it's something which I really want to, to see. Sorry, can I just I, I just have to ask one thing. Come on. If I measure to again this plausible few percent level on the number of DC, can you give me a kind of stop reach? So I have some weird stop, let's call it a stop, just so that we can quickly gauge the impact in loops on Higgs couplings. What kind of reach do I get purely from doing precision Higgs in terms of a stop map? Do you, do you know or does that have some? I don't know the precise answer. No, it's a few, it's a few, few, few hundred GV. It's not, it's not very, it's not it's very, not very high. It's just not, not very good. That, that's yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. This is why I was. Uh, this is one port, right? So right. that tells you, I mean, even if it's the same mass, right. you only did a 25%. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so that, that's why I was, I was stressing exotic Higgs. I mean, the, the effective, you know, the, the problem of just writing the effective field theory and, and <coughs> training the, the scale, that just doesn't work as well as it works in other programs like Flavor, where we are extremely sensitive. And the reason is that we are competing with some model predictions which are pretty large. And so our sensitivity is just very low. And what we need to do is look elsewhere where, where we really have no competition with, with standard methods. Okay, so we'll continue this discussion over Y and Gs. Let's thank the panelists. Shuttles, the two late shuttles leave at 6.45.